In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. Dr. Albrecht, thanks for inviting me into your clinic. Pleasure. Many of my patients are concerned when it comes to radiation exposure when you take x-rays. Um, what do you think of radiation exposures in CT scans? Well, CT is a relatively radiation-intensive um, imaging modality, um, so it has more exposure than conventional uh, uh, x-rays. On the other hand, in the recent maybe decade or so, um, industry has provided us with tools for significantly lowering the radiation exposure of CT. So we are now talking about uh, a reduction by two-thirds or maybe even three-quarters of what it was like about 10 years ago. And, and what about MRI scans? I mean, there are no radiation exposures whatsoever in an MRI scan, but people are always afraid of the noise the machine makes. They're scared some noise reduction techniques are coming on the market so it's getting a little bit silenter but it will never be an entirely quiet examination this has got to do with the due physics of the of the whole process but the machine is very tight and narrow and so so the patient are afraid that they got stuck inside the machine it is narrow it is true uh, although the bores of the of the of these holes have become somewhat bigger recently so it's not quite as narrow and also the tunnels are not quite as long as they used to be it's a little bit less cross claustrophobic there are open machines which are uh, which have more of a gap for the patient however they do not produce the same image quality so therefore we're not so happy about these open machines on the whole the development of radiology is closely linked to the development of computers why is that some of the image modalities like CT for example produce really vast amounts of data three-dimensional data at very very high pre precision and processing this data to the detail that, we, that we're now used to and also with an acceptable speed is something that's only become possible with the uh, rapid development of computers. But if all the data is in form of computer um, storage available, we, we can send the data of the picture via the internet worldwide without any borders. So, so does it mean that our viewers, for instance, can send you um, their x-ray pictures and you take a look at, at it and make a diagnosis? Yeah. Well, theoretically, yes. Of course, um, it is very easy to send these images around the world provided they're not too large. And this is very useful for uh, second opinion, for example. However, it's very important that not only we take the pictures, but we interpret them with the patient, with knowledge about the patient. So we need to know what the compl patient's complaints are. We need to know what maybe other uh, examination results are. And then we put this all together into a report, which hopefully eventually gives the correct diagnosis of this patient. So you're still doctors and you do the examination as well? Absolutely. Radiology is not all about x-rays and making diagnosis. You can um, even treat patients with something called interventional radiology. What is that? Well, interventional radiology really started off as part of angiography. Angiography is a technique uh, where we insert tiny little catheters into patients' arteries via the groin and then we inject contrast and uh, make x-rays of the arteries. Um, and this is something we've done for decades. Um, and some smart radiologists uh, started thinking about the option of not just using this for diagnosis, but for actually using the catheters in the arteries for treatment. On those monitors, you can see a patient where you actually closed up an artery. So, so what happened there? Uh, this is a patient um, who uh, had bowel cancer in the past and has recently developed uh, metastases to the liver. Um, he was operated on those metastases once, but then uh, one of the metastases came back, which we can see here on the image. So what we did was uh, we interrupted the blood supply to the liver, as you can see here, with a um, catheter in the liver vessels supplying um, the tumor. Um, we blocked those arteries with little particles. Um, in addition, we inserted um, a number of, diff of uh, probes into the tumor under uh, image control. Th these probes are used to heat the tumor. And then with a combination of interruption of blood supply and heating, we destroy the tumor. And then 
uh, the patient came back recently, eight, ten months later, for follow-up imaging, which very nicely shows that the tumor is that this area has now shrunken, it's been transformed into a scar. The tumor remains to be controlled, and there's no new tumor. So the patient is at the moment tumor-free. So it's like you remove parts of the liver without actually removing it out of the body. So it's more like a scar tissue, so to say. Very fascinating. Uh, what waits in the future in the field of radiology? Well, radiology is a very, very rapidly developing field. Um, with the very fast computers we have nowadays, um, we can handle uh, amounts and volumes of data that we thought was, that was unthinkable until quite recently. And I think this will continue, and computers will not only show us even nicer images, but I think they will they will help us making diagnosis. So they will propose which areas on the scan might, might be abnormal and what they might represent. Uh, so this will change the role of the radiologist and will further improve our quality and ultimately uh, help our patients. Thanks so much for inviting me today into your clinic, Dr. Albrecht. Thanks so much. It's been a pleasure.